Greetings, this is Maxo Diddley here, and today I am here with another C Sharp tutorial to help you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with how to validate an IP address using C Sharp. So before we start, I'm just going to say this will work for IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. And let's get right into it. So make sure you import system and system.net as we'll be using those libraries for our validation. Now, in our main method, we've got string input equals uh, a lot of 69s. Uh, if you want to know how many there are, uh, just pause the video and count and let me know in the comments. Then we've got console.write line is valid IP, and we pass in input as the parameter, and then we do console.read line. So we're calling our IP validation method, and it's going to print true or false. And let's go and create that method. So we got public static bool is valid IP string user input. So this is a Boolean function. So it's going to return a true or false, true being valid, false being invalid. And we've got string user input is going to be the parameter we pass in to validate. In this case, it'll probably be our input variable. Inside, we do two simple lines of code. We do IP address address. We are creating an address object more specifically an IP address object, and we're going to use this to, to store our attempt to, to pass the user input into that IP address. Then we have another line, return IP address dot try pass, user input, out address. So before we look at the other part, you might be thinking, Max, surely this try pass should just be enough. Like in other tutorials where you do a try pass or use a try catch, to attempt to pass something, and normally I would say you are correct. But try pass doesn't behave in the way you might expect. Obviously, you, it takes in a string, and then it tries to convert that string into an IP address object. And if it fails, it's going to do a false. But it can be true even if the initial input isn't an IP address because this will attempt to construct an IP address based on the input you give. For example, if you typed in 20.2, that's not a valid IP address, but it would convert it to 20.0.0.2. If you were to give it 128.1.2, it would return 128.1.0.2. And you might want this, but for this program, we specifically want to validate the user input. We don't want the software to go try and converting that user input to a valid IP address. We want to check if what the user input it is valid or not on its own. So what can we do? Well, what we can do is we can have an AND statement, then we can do address dot to string equals user input. So we're going to then check this address and convert it back to a string. If it matches, what the original input was, we know it successfully converted that input to an IP address without making any changes. However, if it made some changes and then we convert it back to a string, it's not going to match your initial user input. So we know there's a valid IP address, but it wasn't what the user inputted. That's what we're doing here. And we can use this to circumvent the issue that some may encounter of try pass will do more than just try to convert that input it tries to construct a new ip address which you might want and if you want that that's fine but for this tutorial we don't want it and that's it so we're gonna actually try it out be sure to save your work and um, as you can see uh all those 69s aren't a valid ip address uh let's just try a 69 on its own and see what happens it's false. Now let's try some actual IP addresses. We're going to go for this classic. As you can see, it's true. And typically an IPv4 address is just four numbers separated by full stops and those numbers have to be between 0 and 255. That's a very basic overview. There's more you can go into, but that's very basic for the purpose of this tutorial. Let's try another one. Um, that's true. Now let's try an IPv6 address, because this can work for IPv6 addresses. The IP address object does not discriminate like that. 
And it's true. That's a valid IPv6 address, apparently. Anyway, thanks for being a great audience. I do want to clarify, if you're going to do something like this for a commercial project or something big that's reliable, I would strongly advise you do a bit more due diligence as this is mainly aimed at people doing college, A-levels, university, high school, where this does a very good job, but there could be some exceptions because obviously there's a lot more to networking than just this. But thanks for being a great audience. And I'll leave some material in the description below if you want to read more about this stuff. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. If you want to see more C Sharp, Java, Visual Basic or Python tutorials, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for being a great audience. I'll see you next time.